Hi everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Reading Nook. My name is Pagan, and today I am joined by an old friend who I haven't actually gotten to see in person in, God, like five years? It's been a very, very long time. But Robin Burks, welcome to the show. And I'm so happy that you're here. We'll talk all about your books, especially your new one that launched today, which I yeah. am thrilled for because it was so good. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I know it has been forever since we last saw each other. Yeah, it has. And, you know, the pandemic didn't help with that at all. And, you know, the, it's been so hard, especially with the con scene. And to give everybody a little background, I am a published author. I used to do book signings at conventions. So did Robin. And we live within like, I don't know, like three or four hours of each other. So we would end up coming to similar conventions and hang out and all that cool stuff. And so we did all the cool stuff at the cons and got to geek out, especially over Doctor Who, because they were usually Doctor Who conventions. So yeah, it was fun. We had a good time, got to know each other very well and have kept up over social media. But yes. Now, Robin is finally here on the show and gets to talk about your brand new book that just came out. Robin has a whole bunch of other books available, which we will talk about shortly. But the new one that I cannot wait to talk about because it was probably, oh gosh, I would say in the last like three years, probably one of the top five books I've read. And oh, wow. for 2023, it is holding the number two spot. It, it got kicked out by number one, unfortunately, but <laughs> it is holding number two strong and steady. And it is the Dream Seeker. It launched today and it is a really interesting take on a modern twist of Celtic mythology. So let's talk. Let me give you guys a synopsis before we go any further. That way you guys are like, what are you talking about? Um the synopsis of the book is The Dream Seeker. What if your dreams were the key to unlocking magical powers? Alessa Gray is just an awkward teenager until the day she discovers that her dreams and her magic are real. But just as Alyssa realizes that her magic is full or she has her full magical potential, a dark god invades her dreams in search of an ancient artifact that will give him the power to bring others like him into the world and ultimately start a war that will destroy everything and everyone that Alyssa loves. And it is so good. It is a book that I literally could not put down. And that never happens. Ever. <laughs> like, usually it takes me like a week or so to read a book. I could not put this book down. My husband's just like, you've been attached to your Kindle. Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I check back later. I'm fine. Just bring me food. Make sure I eat. <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> Tell us about the book. What inspired you to write this really amazing book? So um, the whole idea actually started as like an online role play. Awesome. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the character was very similar to how she is in the book and even her mom, you know, because they have that really special mom daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when I finally decided to write the story, I was like, OK, I want to do something with magic. I want to do something a little different. And I am obsessed with mythology. That's why I have, you know, a book series based around Greek mythology. So I decided to dive in Celtic mythology because I bought this book when I went to Ireland um, some years ago and I was reading all these stories and I got obsessed mm -hmm. and how it just made its way into this book. And when I was working on like magical systems and trying to figure out how magic worked, it was that plus um, like role playing games like um, World of Darkness. Nice. I I love Changeling the Dreaming series. So I kind of tapped into a little bit of that too. It's kind of a hodgepodge of pretty much a lot of things that I just love and love that's how it. the story just came out <laughs> oh my gosh that is so awesome and I love that you kind of picked this enchanting world that is somewhere between I would say fae and because it's not like traditional fae but I would say that you could almost put Alyssa and her family in a fae kind of world which is so cool and so awesome but it, it's not traditional fae which you know you expect traditional fae to be like high lords and all this other stuff but yet right. yours is completely different from that which makes it so unique and so awesome and 
I like that the magic isn't just something that is like, poof, there it is. Nope. Uh uh. It, you have to access it through the dreaming and almost like stepping into the astral realms. And then you get into the whole thing with the gods and all oh, you guys go buy the book. <laughs> just go buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool and i like that your first um i don't want to call him a villain because i like the dagda but he is technically <laughs> a villain so i like that you chose him now how many books do you have planned for the series do you do you know yet i'm planning three okay. i actually am going to be switching protagonist for the next two but oh. i'll be bringing in alessa and the other characters they're all going to come together at some point I literally just spent this afternoon starting work on fleshing out the character in the second book. And she's already starting to scream inside my head. So I'm I'm looking forward to starting that one soon. Yay! I love it so much. And I think it's so cool. I'm, you know, obviously your book made me cry. And I'm not going to give you guys spoilers. But uh, the book made me have more feels than I was expecting out of the book when I started. I was just like, oh. And when you open it in the first dream... Like, I was just like, did Robin write a horror novel? Because this feels very <laughs> horror-esque. <laughs> I, you know, I, I like to tap into horror because I read a lot of horror. And, you know, I, I do that with, like, you know, the Zeus Inc. books. I, mm -hmm. And then, then, you know, of course, I wrote a vampire book, too. So I kind of always have to kind of bring in a little bit of horror. <laughs> That that first dream was freaky. Like I I was like kind of white knuckling it through parts of it, and I was just like, oh god, what is about to happen to this poor girl? And it, it, honestly, it was so good, and it sucks you in so deep that you kind of forget that reality exists. And then when you like put the Kindle down and you step out of the book, you're like, oh. That was not the world I was just in. Where am I? What am I doing? Which is always the best kind of book that makes you forget that this terrible reality exists. Right. That's why we read. <laughs> that is why we read. That's why we write. That's why we do all the things. Yes. So um, what was your favorite part of the book? If you had to pick one or even literally a top three. Thing, that first dream, it is literally the favorite, my favorite thing that I've written in that book. I just, I love how that just set the tone for things. I absolutely love that too. The first dream just really does, it, it sucks you in hardcore. So anybody who's reading the book, you're just like, oh, this is kind of, you know, a, a YA kind of thing. And it's going to be about high school. No, no. Wait till you get to the first dream. I promise you, you're going to be sucked in. You're never going to like be able to put the book down again. Then you're going to be like, oh, it's over. Crap. There's no more. The book two is not out yet. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on my front porch, finishing the book. And I'm like, oh, it's over. Damn it. <laughs> it's in the works. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> that That's the best part. Now, out of all your characters, who was your favorite? Oh, wow. You know, I kind of liked Uncle Fergus. Fergus was <laughs> great. Oh, he he's was so great. <laughs> but he's also, you know, he's still caring, but in a very gruff manner. And there's just, I just loved that about him. You know, and the funny thing about uh, Fergus was that he was one of those characters that you're just like, I'm either going to love you or hate you just because you're going to be one of those characters that's in my face and is going to be annoying. And he, he makes you love him. He really does. And in the beginning, Sean was one of those characters that I'm just like, mm, I don't know if you're going to be a good dad. And then he turns out he's a fantastic father and he's so f good at everything he does. But I always have to say. Literally that, my thought process right there as I was writing it. I didn't like him at first. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the characters are just like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You keep writing. I'm going to prove that I'm a good guy. I promise. Right, right. <laughs> They take on lives of their own. <laughs> they do. They have their own voices and their own things. And um, anybody who's a reader may not understand that. Or anybody who's listening to this, if you're not a writer, you may not understand that. But trust me, the characters will, sometimes you'll have the whole book outlined, all your notes done, everything ready to go start to finish. And then you have a character that's a side character that walks in and goes, hold my beer. Yeah. I'm going to take <laughs> over the rest of the story. And it's like, but you're a side character that dies in the next chapter. What are you doing? Yeah, I've had that happen way too many times. It's very Sorry. uncomfortable and annoying. <laughs> and you have to rework everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, 
I would have to say probably the character that was the most surprising to me was Silas. Oh, he's and probably my second favorite. He's <laughs> he's definitely probably my favorite out of the whole book. Um, Silas was one of those characters that was really surprising. And in the beginning, I'm just like, I don't know. Should we trust you? Are you a good guy? And then turns out, yeah, he he's mostly a good guy but he was so great ah they were all so great you did such a great job with everybody um you, so you have this book um done let's talk a little bit about your other series your greek mythology series that the name escapes me off the top of my head uh the um, it's the alex grosjean series thank um, you i was about to butcher books. her last name <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about those. Those are set in Greek mythology, right? Yeah, but they're also slightly futuristic. It's like, you know, 50 years from now, because I can't write one genre, obviously. I mean, that's okay. It, that just mythology. means that you're multifaceted, which is awesome. <laughs> so it's a detective story. Yeah. As but, well. Mm -hmm. so. Um, Now, those ones have been out. Oh, gosh. I think that you're. About a decade now. About a it's decade? Been about yeah. I wanted to say, I wanted to say that last time we were um at a con together, I thought that Return of the Titans had just come out, but maybe not. I don't remember. <laughs> that was twenty seventeen. Was it twenty seventeen? Twenty seventeen, twenty eighteen. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. Gosh, that feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> I know it does. <laughs> So uh, tell everybody about this series, because this series, unfortunately, I actually have not read. I have had it on my to be read list for ever and never got to it because my ADHD brain kind of forgot it oh. exists. <laughs> I have like 20,000 books on my Kindle. I get it. <laughs> yeah, that happens more often than not. <laughs> So um, this series is actually set like 50 years in the future. And um, basically it's a detective named Alex Grosjean. And she used to be a cop, but she's retired because she kind of has a dark history with the police. Oh. And she actually is um, tasked with finding a missing person, which is her best friend's father. And that takes her into learning that the Greek gods are real. And they're actually, you know, kind of messing around with the mortal realm. That sounds awesome. Okay. I now remember now why I put it on my TV red list and just never got to it. But let's be honest. Most of us readers have that TV red list that's way oh. longer than it should be. Definitely. And it, more, <laughs> it has more books in it than humanly possible to read. <laughs> right. <laughs> I keep telling myself every year and I'm like, no, I'm going to make a decent dent in it and then new books come out. Oh, it's one of those beautiful cycles it's like i want to support all the new books but that list is still over there <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly how mine is so i get it yes and you also have the madam vampire book out right yes and that is just like a standalone like classic vampire story kind of inspired by anne rice that mm -hmm. kind of thing it's also kind of historical fiction that, that one's been out for a while too <laughs> that one has been out for a while too yeah so I I remember I want to say maybe that one was the one that we just came out. Honestly, I don't remember. It's been too many years, y'all. Um, 2018. I looked on Good Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I remember now you were advertising it. That's what it was. You had like a whole pamphlet yeah. of it on your table, and it's it's coming back. The memories are back in the brain. They're back there, but it, it's coming back to me now, which is super cool. Uh, all the books are awesome. Everybody, uh, everybody, all the books are available on Kindle. Um, and y if you prefer Kobo or Barnes Noble or Smashwords, wherever you like to buy your books, they're all available there. Obviously, I will have Amazon links because I have an Amazon Associates account and it helps me keep the podcast flowing. So if you want to buy them through that link, awesome. If not, that's cool. Wherever you'd like to buy your books, check out all of Robin's books because they're fantastic. And in addition to book two of the Children of the Gods series, uh, do you have any other books that you're working on or planning for the future? 
Um, I'm just going to get through the series. <laughs> you know what? I've got a lot of things I've written and shelved. I've got a couple of stories. I'm like, I'll get back to it later. So I, I have no idea. I wrote like a space pirate story. Oh, neat. That's like way out there. And then I've got like a, a high fantasy novel I started that I never finished. There's all kinds of stuff that I've written that maybe I will return to. But I'm going to get through this series first. That's yes. what I'm focusing on. <laughs> Get through this series because we need at least book two for sure because we need to know what happens. Uh, or at least I do. I will be your biggest fan in, in terms of this one. So, <laughs> um, Now, I don't know how the pandemic has affected uh, your cosplay stuff, but how's that going? Um, It's picking back up. I'm actually at the point where I'm only doing like one big cosplay build a year mm -hmm. just for this fact that it's expensive yes <laughs> and I am focusing more time on my writing again so I have to kind of balance the two that's totally fair that is completely and totally fair uh for everybody who's listening Robin is also a fantastic cosplayer and oh gosh I if you follow her Instagram there's like a million photos of all the beautiful things that she's created I can't even name them all the first one that comes to mind is Merida uh from Brave and there's some Star Wars stuff in there. I think there's some Doctor Who stuff in there as well. Uh, but yeah, tons of cosplay, really cool stuff. So if that's your jam, please go check out her social media because there's all sorts of really fun things on there for you to check out and support her and do all those great things. Uh, but yeah, this has been absolutely amazing. And I'm so thankful that you actually got to come on the show and we got to catch up. And I am looking forward to book two, obviously. And yeah. everybody who's listening, please go pick up a copy of The Dream Seeker. It is out today. And today is May the 2nd. This episode will actually be airing on May the 3rd. But it will be out and available for you to purchase everywhere. It is so cool. It's such a great book. Please go buy it. Trust me. It is just a fantastic <laughs> book. I, I can't recommend this book enough. I think I've probably recommended it so many times that most of my friend group is just like, we get it. You like the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I think they're getting to that point and it's like, you already recommended that one. What's another one? I'm like, no, 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 go read that one first and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably getting annoyed with me. But everybody who's listening, go buy the book, go buy all of Robin's books, and we will see you all next time. And I will catch up with you all next time for my TV Reds for May. And we'll go from there. So everybody, take care. Go follow Robin. All the links are in the description. And we'll talk very soon.